So let's go. It's your music and lifestyle, fashion profile, the entertainment source for everything you want to know about. North to the south, the east to the west side. Stay connected with Ruben Torres worldwide. So let's go. Across the globe, well respected. Beasting on the industry. Connected. Check it out, man. Today, we're out here chilling. My man Flax, Nitty's Tattoo Shop. Out here in Chula Vista, beautiful Chula Vista. Beautiful South San Diego day. Sunny, we're out here chilling. Got a little something going on. You got Bambi out here, you got the wrong kind. So we're just out here, man. We're gonna come by and check it out, see what you got going on, man. So let's go beep it out. Alright, so we're here with, with Flax, the infamous, notorious Flax from Nitty's Tattoo Parlor. Yeah, that. And uh, we're here, man. We just wanted to get a little something and we want to get down to, uh, to the story of who he is and why he is who he is. So um, come in and join our world as we come here and visit the Flax. Watch what's up. up. Ruben Torres. Get connected. Tell us a little bit about about your your beginnings as a tattoo artist. Tell you the truth, man. I broke my leg. I fell into it. The homie had just opened a tattoo spot. Um, I was doing some drawings for him. Uh, he was kind of like, "What do you want? Do you want money for these drawings? Do you want me to tattoo you?" I was like, "No, nah, man. I want you to show me how to use that tattoo machine because I seen what he could do. You know what I mean? And I seen the kind of the money that gets generated and something like that." Plus, it'd be like a real cool job, man. I'm always into art, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. it was something real cool for me to get into. So, was that here in San Diego? Yep. SD Tattoo. That's where I started, SD Tattoo downtown. So, you know so I mean? just took off from there. So, now now you have your own shop uh -huh. here in San Diego in Chula Vista. Tell us a little bit about the shop and what makes it different than any other shop around. Maybe it's Tattoo. First of all, there ain't no flash on the walls, you know what I mean? You come on in there, and it's pretty much custom pieces drawn up by me or one of the artists working there. Um, it's a real unique shop, real friendly, real uh, uh, competitive with each other, you know what I mean? Not, not in a bad way, but uh, we, we definitely make each other step our game up, you know what I'm saying? When we get it in like that. And, and it's real cool to be working with, with my boy Poncho, Paul, Efe, you know, they're real good dudes. Tremendous artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, above and beyond. Like, they do some cool ass work. You should come check it out. Let you get the time. Uh, I was introduced in this game really by like Bobby from Tribal, so I gotta always give that dude props. He, he really put me out there, and, and you know, when Bobby stamps him and says, You kind of good, that, that does a lot for your career, you know what I'm saying? And, and other people, oh, he fucks with Tribal? Okay, cool. He must be, you know, so. It's definitely opened a lot of doors for me. I've done a lot of stuff for Tribal. I've done a lot of stuff for Sullen, Osiris, skateboard shoes. I recently just hit up um, the Osiris warehouse on the floor. I did some lettering, it's real cool. I just feel like real honored and, and, and blessed to be able to, to be a part of things that when I was growing up, I thought were cool, you know what I mean? And, and actually be involved with these people like Bobby from Tribal, Brian from Sullen, uh, Brian Reed at Osiris, all real good dudes. Like, like the tattoo community, the art community, the skateboard industry, the music industry, it's all like linked up together. So when you meet good people, you all the way around start meeting real good people. Like my boy right here, like been nothing but good people since I met him, so. You know what I mean? It's like good people kicking with good people, foaming motherfuckers kicking with foaming motherfuckers. That's just the way it goes. It's just like ballers gonna kick it with ballers, and crackheads gonna kick it with crackheads. <laughs> What was your first tattoo that, that you ever had, that you ever got? Three dots in the cross, man. You know, young and dumb. Your daughter, and, and she gave you a tattoo. Um, yeah. 
I'll show you the real one though, man. I showed you this one last time. She did this one. She did the 32, that's the block, you know what I mean? She did that. That's also on the Tripod DVD right here. Then we can get that up in there later. But this is my favorite one. She did this one when she was eight years old. I shaved a little piece of my leg, the hair off, and I said, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. And this is what she did. Get my skinny leg in here. Yee! That's what she did. What's the tattoo that means, that means the most, that kind of describes who you are, that you have on it? Hmm. It's got to be the new one I just got. That's it right there. You can check that one out too. And this is how I'm really, really feeling these days. This is what it's all about for me. If you can't read that because it's too crazy a script, Don't Bum Bum Boy Manico from Brazil. It says grind now, shine later. Because that's what it's about, man. You put in hard work, and eventually you're going to shine. You know? I believe very strongly in that. And that's why I'm always working hard. So, how do you feel about... I mean, back in the day when, when we were growing up, it was... You know, you get tattoos just for the love of tattoos. Nowadays, it's kind of become more more of like a costume from like hip hop artists, or it's it's kind of just. It, how do you feel about that? Like every like we're watching the basketball game today. Like every every basketball player, like it's almost like required. You gotta have a tattoo. Nah, I'm all for that, man. The more tattoos uh, famous people get, the better because it makes it more socially acceptable to the people that like to stereotype people that have tattoos and just think it's criminals or motorcycle gang members or, you know, a lot of people see tattoos and they think, oh shit, fucking lock up, you know what I mean, on National Geographic and they just relate that to like certain stereotypes of, you know, this motherfucker just got out of Pelican Bay because he's got some tattoos on his face and his forehead. Do you feel you get stereotyped? Oh, for sure. Got the fucking, uh... Like this one time at the mall, this lady like grabbed her purse when I walked by and it just struck me like hella funny. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, the least motherfucker that's gonna grab a purse and run, you know? Oh, the tall guy with the tattoos on his face, he went that way. Come on now, man. I'm like, why would I do that? Would you allow your daughter to get a tattoo? Yeah, of course, man. I mean, um, me and my daughter have a real cool relationship. Um, the age gap between us is not that far. So I'm, I'm pretty hip to everything that's going on, and you know what I mean? It's not like, I try to make it in a way that she doesn't um, try to hide things from me, you know what I mean? So I, I try to keep it real cool with her. She goes through cell phones like a motherfucker. It's expensive, man. She graduates tomorrow. Have the graduation, Lulu. And, um, where, where do you see yourself and what you're doing five to years from Man. Going up, there ain't nowhere to go but up, man. You know, I'm, I'm real dedicated in what I do. Um, just like the tat I just showed you a little while ago, man. Just grind now, shine later. I believe strongly in that, man. That's what I'm trying to do. Eventually, one day, it's all gonna pay off. And I want it to really pay off for my daughter more than it's gonna pay off for me. I might have a couple of toys before I die. I'm already 34 years old, though, you know what I mean? Like, I still gotta do a few things in my life, man. Stay tuned. Um, I have some stuff coming out in the near future for Urban Ink Magazine. Um, I got a lettering book I'm working on right now. Should be coming out uh, by the end of summer probably. Uh, it's called Script Killers Association, SKA. Um, it's gonna have me, a couple of my boys in there, but mostly, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give my lettering to the world, you know? And hopefully they enjoy it. I just feel real fortunate and blessed, like I said, man, to be involved in these type of things man like not this is not some everyday type shit like this is some cool shit and it still blows my mind today that i'm able to do stuff like this and people really dig what i what i do you know that's that's like a compliment in itself right there like i feel real honored and, and when people are like oh you're lettering you're lettering you're doing the, the west coast stilo man you're giving it flavor like that's amazing to me, man. Like, I feel real good when people say that, and that's why I do it. You know what I mean? I do it for people to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. Flax exclusive, right here on Connected. Doing it big. You ever want to get anything done, you know where to go. This the man. The man behind the man, right here. Ruben Torres, Flax, Connected. Yeah, that.